Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular, not regular, but special uh, special meeting we've set up for June 14, 2021. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bridge will be filling in for Ms. Berner as the clerk of council, so we appreciate that, sir. And if you would call roll. Absolutely. Uh, May uh, Councilman Rogol. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Brim. Here. Councilwoman Engelson. Yep. Councilwoman Milikowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Looks like we have six members present with Mr. Cobb. Yes. And let's, let's get we we'll have to excuse him for the end of the meeting. And invocation tonight will be done by Vice Mayor Cook. Hey, if you will, bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, please bless this meeting. Let us do what we can as far as the best for the citizens of this city. Please protect our first responders, our sheriff's deputies, our EMTs, and our firefighters. With that, we pray, amen. Thank you, sir. And then we'll do the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Moving on, action on minutes, none, communications, none, city manager report, none. Uh, comments from members of the public? Anyone have any comments? None. Didn't expect any on this meeting. <laughs> and committee reports, none. Moving on, resolutions, ordinances, none. Other business. Uh, discussion, first topic will be the CDBG projects discussion. I don't see how you say that so fast, Mr. Pickup. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of years. <laughs> CDBG, yeah. All right, so um, I don't know who, did you want to start us off, Mr. Bridge, or did you just want to open it up to council as a uh, discussion, or I didn't know if you had any updates since our last meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me just update council. Um, so we had some people come out on um, Friday, VanCom Builders, um, kind of looked at some things. Um, we really wanted to have some, like, really strong numbers for council, but what we've learned from the, the experts that we had out on site is that uh, to build a comparable size shelter house. And, and for those of that were at that meeting, if I missed you, please correct me. There was a lot of information. For us to build a very comparable size shelter house is going to take $300. Uh, so how we initially did it, we went online and got some estimates and stuff like that. It was about 1.30 to get a really nice bell and whistle shelter house, but of course the estimate online was not accurate from when they actually saw people in person. And it wasn't the same uh, website or anything that gave the estimate. Um, so, once we found that information out, basically what we have to present to council is we need to declare instruction on an instruction on which way council wants to proceed with a project. Um, it doesn't look like we'll be able to do much with a shelter house and a skate park. Um, and the skate park would be, you know, all that money goes into the skate park and the shelter house would have to be questionable. And I know some things come up about the pool as well. So, what we're hoping for today is council can leave with a, a clear directive for us to so we can get through that application because as our guest at the last meeting said, dirt the first come first for basis and we hate to mess up on this free, free month. Um, some things that we did find out during the meeting from Dirk, who was also at, present there at that meeting on Friday, is where we are, we, the city will have to spend some money out of the pocket more than likely to design with an architect and stuff like that. Um, Dirk is going to be going back to his because if you remember in that free application there was 40,000 set aside for administrative costs. And that usually gets received by the county for administrative experience. Um, so he is going to see if we can actually get some of that to help pay for the design aspect of it. I'm not holding my breath on that, to be honest. With you. So we will be, we will have to, like, like I said, design it and then get the formal estimate off of that. Design. But again, we're looking at most of that grant money to be made up with either the shelter house or I'll go to the skate park or pool or our county. Um, and what I get today is just a quick map of just of the location of where we're thinking about putting that shelter house in the park. I know the Parks and Rec Board had wanted additional parking. So we're talking about this with this grant money if council chooses to use it all in the shelter house. It is a good way to go ahead and get additional parking into the park, have them come off Washington. And I just did a really rough drop where you see the, the arrow coming in from Washington is where that little driveway is essentially. We're going to have it swing snake back there. But the area we're looking for is basically this area. 
sneak up is in this. There's some trees there. There's some metal, old school metal playground equipment. Um, but then that's why I just wanted to give counsel this. You guys have somewhat of a visual of the section of the park we're looking at. You have anything to add, Mr. Pickett? Yeah, other than the shelter portion will be turnkey, that's water, sewer, and everything is part of the cost, part of the pavement, all that. Would that be, since I wasn't there, just out of curiosity, I don't know if it was discussed, would that be a, a, a one single room and, and a kitchenette just like at the end, or would it be like a slight separation or anything? Um, that would come up to the design. You know, we can even have, um, we talked briefly really talked about that, whether the kitchen be in its own separate room or just having literally one big open area and the kitchen kind of off to the corner. We would want some kind of island or something to come out so people can serve up, put food up. Right. But to enclose it, <clears throat> up. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. Because we didn't. We didn't, we didn't want a, a full blown kitchen in that space. Yeah. If we put yeah, ovens in there. Got some yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I know it's all right. right. If, if we put what's called a warming kitchen, yeah. which is primarily, and I will call it a household stove, uh, refrigerator, freezer, microwave, that kind of thing, we're okay. If we go with any type of a commercial kitchen that would have an open flame, now we're into a fire suppression system. And the other thing that the builder brought out in our discussion was the fact that if we go with 300 people, anything that's going to be 300 people or more is going to require a sprinkler system, which is going to run your cost up considerably. So primarily, I think we looked at the fact that for something like comparable with what we got, the 400,000 is going to be shot. If I can add on to that, yeah. um, so I had to get clarified I think, for Mr. Kiko too. Um, mm -hmm. The oven, I think he recommended almost like a built-in to a wall mm -hmm. because the oven's fine. It's the top stove yeah, top burner stove, that stove top burner make it a different actually. type of kitchen. So if there mm -hmm. was a, a stove in there, we could have a, a range of top. Would it be like a wall? And then he recommended yeah. just doing some sort of because, I mean, people more than likely won't be doing their cooking there. They're going to be cooking and bringing it there. Uh, he said a lot of the newer ones are doing to avoid all this stuff. They're putting in basically four or five more. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Which toaster ovens. completely suffice yeah. for yeah. Okay. yeah, that was my, that was going to be my question. If we went with a um, shelter, would we even need a, uh, you know, a, I mean, with just a microwave? Yeah, yeah I mean, microwave. toaster oven, microwave, refrigerator. Something, yeah, because... Um, yeah. Something to keep your stuff cold, warm up if you need to. Right. Um, nothing with like big heating out. No, it cause nice fire. And that's why we could put that kitchen on, on kind of one of the back sides, make it a used state, keep it open that way. If you are in the kitchen prepping, you're not so, separated from, from the guest. Uh, the one thing the builder did say is we'll have to have two bathrooms. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have to have a, a, a male and a female bathroom. Um, or you can designate both of the sides. I would suggest rather than going with microwave ovens, you get a like a built-in oven under a counter because it gives you a whole lot more space. If you have a large group of people, you're probably going to have more, probably going to be in 9 by 13 pans, which will not fit into most microwaves anyhow. That's why he recommended the, the glorified warming station. Yeah, they have yeah. Now. The countertop, so, countertop yeah. toaster oven. But I agree with you. If, if there isn't kind of big bulky thing, it needs to be, right. It needs to be. If not, it's just going to be additional space. You got to kind of work around. Right. Mm -hmm. So, are we going to put parking over by that building as well? Or are we just going to increase by the current shelter house and off? We have a whole new parking, yeah. and then we can do a little over, you know, for additional parking if people want to go. And if you look at how it would end up being laid out. I, I wish we could have a little better, but if we say this comes out here, and these are just rough estimates. Yep. We have it there, the parking lot here. We do want to keep a little space around our current place, mm -hmm. like I put the first expansion. Yep. And we want to keep, I don't know, I don't know, 20, 30 foot buffer from the playground. You want a buffer from the playground, the playground. so if yeah. someone accidentally yeah. steps on the gas, yeah. you'll have Oh, absolutely. No, but no. yes, it'll all be servicing that. So, and that may even, if we look at it like that, if we end up going that route, it may reduce what we need to do on the other side of the park. Yeah. Now we, we have access to, to the building parking-wise off of Washington? 
as well, or just straight off of five seventy eight? On Washington. On Washington. Okay. Yeah. Because oh, we don't want we don't want to take. So you don't any, want to cut across. No, we don't want to okay. take any vehicular traffic across that five seventy eight. Does the uh, I would since I wasn't commuting, but I think I already asked this. Part uh, asphalt parking lot is not part of the grant, right? Just that would oh, have to be done. All be part of it. At the meeting, you said no. That's not what it's saying. I asked no, him it, if that would include expansion of a parking lot. Because he probably meant the one where that one was around the area. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So it, it would cover. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. It'd be part of the. We got. We would have to have parking to it. So. Right. No, I knew that. I just didn't know if we had to put that out of our own pocket. Gotcha. No, I think in the meeting, the eight said the only thing to grant what you cover was architectural fees. I was going to have to cover, which Randy brought up about uh, the 44000 or whatever 40, it was, 40000 See if we get some of that back um, to cover our city's architect fees. Mm -hmm. um, there might be a few other things, which Howie had brought up with him as well about in past grants, he's been able to get it into into the, the grant work where it covers that cost as well. So. Uh, the other thing, this is going to be probably a metal building mm -hmm. with your present wood cost up over 200%. It was looked at the fact that the metal building is going to be much cheaper and we're going to get much more bang for the buck. And maintenance, I mean, right now we're having issues at the current shelter yeah. house with... Yeah, about every five to seven years we do a coating, which is fine. That'll keep it for 100 years. And then we have the bore be boring bees that we always have to take care of. Yeah, we were, I don't know if you talked about it after we left the last meeting. We were, they were up there digging away. Yeah, I got to get that guy to come in. And metal, and metal buildings have come a long way. Oh, yeah. Part of the uh, Part of the charm of architecture is the rustic That's uh, so one of the things I brought up. I'm, I'm a, from a plan of design that it, it would be not idea, but at the same time, too, you can you can paint the exterior of the metal to be like a brown and then do landscaping around it. Um, I mean, clearly, it's not going to match perfectly, um, but it really, the most council wants to do a whole new structure. But hopefully they'll be you know, separated enough to not cause too much of a problem. But I think in day two, it is a big deal, but it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. What does, I know you mentioned before, I just didn't want to say it again without being right. What did you say just ballpark that the shelter house brings in? Was it 15, 20,000? About 16,000. 16,000. Now, would we assume, you know, because the current one won't have a kitchen, so. I would assume we might charge just a, you know, a few bucks more for the one that's newer and a few more, you know, amenities. Yeah. Um, and that's when I like the question you just brought. So here, here's a, a thought. I, I like the idea of the shelter house, and hear me out. What about moving it to a different location? And I just literally thought of this yesterday. This could serve two purposes. We have a second shelter house because we know the current one we have is always, you know, I think as we discussed, that's why we're sitting here because it's pretty much rented out for the entire month of June. Move it to the pool. And here's what I'm saying is we've got this huge concrete pad of, down there that we, which would have to be ripped out. Build it in that area. Put a fence. You, and I've got it drawn up. It's going to be hard to explain without me showing it to you. But you make it part of the pool. So you, you, that, you make it part of the pool so that way... It's another revenue for the pool to help the pool recoup so much money year round instead of just the three months. So the pool's running and it's losing, you know, let's just say for conversation, say $15,000 a year. Even though the pool closes at the end of August, you've still got the shelter house, we'll call it the clubhouse and the pool that can be rented that still generates revenue year round to help make up any difference. But it's also gated off to where if you rent it during the pool season, you, you've got that option to, okay, I've got this clubhouse. It can open up to the pool if, if need be during the summer. But once summer's gone, you, you basically lock that gate. You can't get into the pool, and it still gets rented year-round and generates money. Mike? Yes? There's a magic marker there on a board. Can you put some boxes up there so that I can? Yeah, well, I've got <laughs> Yeah, I can try. Some arts and crafts. 
<laughs> Why don't you pass that around? Okay, so I'll pass it. I'm going to explain it to this side. So I should have printed this out. I apologize. I just brought this, I did this last night. Okay, so currently the volleyball net is here. And this is a full two sided, even though only one of it gets you basketball. Mm -hmm. Put a few, these are all new yellow. Yellow is all new yellow fence. This is going to put the clubhouse here, put the fence here, and a fence here, so it's locked off so no one can just walk into the pool or to the clubhouse. You can still lock in the front door just like our current one. And then what would happen is during the season, this back door, yeah, they could go out to the pool or the volleyball net, the basketball court, even the skate court. These are gates. These areas here are gates. So after the pool closes, if it's still part of the pool, you put it under the same fund, and it's still generating money for a pool where everyone is so concerned about possibly losing money. But once the pool's closed, you obviously don't want someone walking out and you know getting into the pool. This back door, they put a gate up, and it, and it separates from the pool after season. So they can only get to this side over here. So they've still got basketball court, volleyball court, skate park that their kids can use. So the rental of the house would include pool equipment. Exactly. During the pool season. They didn't want to get Yeah. It's just the fun. And you would still have your, your second shelter. You're just moving the location and generating more money. I have a question after the show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so here we go again. This is the big concrete slab that's down at the pool where the racket used to be. It's no longer there. Of course, it has to be torn out mm -hmm. the your structure. This is where the volleyball net's at. This is a, a full-blown basketball court. You divide it in half because only one half of it gets used. Move the volleyball court over, and that gives you the room for the shelter out here. In, in a nutshell, I was just designing all these different things. During the pool season, you could go out this door, out of the back of the shelter house. You would still have the front doors, too. So if you rented it during pool season, you could enjoy the pool as well as part of your party rental or, what, or you know, shelter rental if that's what you wanted to do. But after season, you could put a fence here mm -hmm. or however you want to lay it out to where that, that there's a gate here that's locked so that after the pool is closed, you can't go to the pool. You, you, know, you can't fall in the pool or get hurt or whatever. But then you've got all the other amenities that are still open. You got the clubhouse, you've got the volleyball net, the basketball court, and the skate park that they could also still do. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's generating money for itself and in the off season to help this guy. Yeah. And they're not right on top of each other. If you have two mm -hmm. full clubhouses that are in Smith Park side by side, and say they're full of 20, 20 people are running them at the same time, and now you've got two parties trying to use the same playground equipment, which loses that personal feel. To an extent. Just an idea. My only concern is the parking down there at the pool. We were there Sunday and parking was at a premium. Oh yeah. It's, it's and we looked at that area east of the pool, that wooded area, which again could be uh, cut down and leveled for additional if parking. Make it to I'll yeah. be honest, I think it's oh. until we decide what we're going to do with that pool. Well, that's the thing, though. If the pool decides to close, you can still utilize that area. Let's say, true. say the pool closes. But if the pool closes and we want to redevelop that area, now we have a, a structure in there that is we have to work yeah, around. Yeah. Right, but you're going to fill the pool anyway, so it would leave you a nice landscape for for what? So I mean, the same. We'd have to design around that building that's that's there. We would we have to what do it. I mean, if say the pool closes for mm -hmm. five years or whatever, it could be open for eternity. You know. But if you have a structure in there that you put in your shelter house, and let's say the pool closes, mm -hmm. and we want to redevelop that area, whether we want to make a commercial, sell it to whoever, now we have a a shelter house there that we were going to have to literally either parcel out and sell or develop around. Well, if you just develop around it, you'd have all that. If if it came to that, you'd have the pool you'd fill it in or tear it out. Now you've got room for a nice, you know, um, you know, playground equipment right next to it, just like you would at Smith Park. But also, too, if the pool would be gone and it would be closed, that's also a very economically valuable parcel of land we can sell for a business purpose to get tax revenue. Well, I'm so okay. we'll have to decide where, like, with this, like, we have water, we have to, at that point in time, we'll have to worry about water and sewer, because so we have to have bathrooms in that facility, mm -hmm. figure out where we'd have to connect that to you. Um, but that's the ultimate conflict decision. But 
from an administrator position, um, I would like to see not a dime of this money go to the pool. I mean, it's grant money, it's free. We put a lot of money in that pool these past few years. It's not making money. I think council should sit down at some point in time and have a really good hard part about when is that pool going to actually get an upgrade that it's not going to cost us an arm and a leg every year to have it versus we got to have a hard part about that pool. Um, and to put a new structure down there with not knowing that history, just for a shelter house to benefit the pool, and the pool probably at that point in time, I don't know if we could even receive that as pool revenue. We have to see how that works for the officers. So there's a lot of back end stuff that we would have to look at. Um, but no offense to anyone, but we put a lot of money in that pool these past two years. This is something that we've got on the corner of nearly a half a million dollars free. I think we should just spread the wealth and invest in other parts of it. Does anybody have a problem with email with that? Man. So, are you saying if, if they put a shelter house at this particular pool, mm -hmm. are you saying that if someone, whoever rented the shelter house, would then be granted access to the pool? It would be their option. I mean, it, it, you know, just thinking out loud. I mean, if I, you know, if it was down there, it'd be like, okay, and I haven't written out any of the options, but, you know, you know, you rent the shelter house, it's this price just to rent the shelter house at, next to the pool. Hypothetically, but for X amount of dollars more, you now have access. Your party has access to the pool. If not, they, that gate would stay closed, and they are just able to get to the shelter. Okay, my question then is: Let's say somebody rents out the shelter house, and they have pool access. They've got 100 people in there, and they So it has to be a pretty good sized clubhouse to fit 100 people. Well, I mean, if you think about, I'm thinking about the way that usually events are done at the Southern House in the park. And typically, not everybody stays inside the Southern House. You know, kids are out playing in the park, and you know, people are kind of co-mingling. I've even seen people have events down there with other houses. Bounce houses. So not everybody is always inside the building. I'm good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Did we have we measured what size square building? Where we can get. No, I'm not. No. No. Can I see that picture? Because I get a big one. Which picture? Mine? Yeah. Oh. I apologize. You walked out on sketch on my phone. I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. <laughs> So we would have to pull. This is the full basketball court. Right now, even though only one of its users, it's a double-sided court, but only this side is used. Mm -hmm. But it's big enough to take the volleyball, which is here, put a, these are, like, this is where I started. New fences up. Move, rip this side of the court out, put sand, move volleyball over, and that gives you room where racquetball is for the clubhouse. You fence it in to where, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, lock and key on your system where, and I, I, I would still need something over here. You know, if they want, you know, if it was, mine? yeah, sorry, I'll tell you. Oh, you're good. So, can we just tie the water and put the water into the water? Mm-mm. It's not large enough. It's a large part. Oh, they're quite ceramic. Yeah. So, it would literally have to come in from the it would, Baker. It would come over here on this one. Yeah, Bacon, Blue Baker. So yeah, you'd probably, have to run all new for it. So, that's probably, how many feet? Because we can get a big calculator. Well, this is um, 80, uh, 85, this, this is, this is, yeah, this building is almost a, it's 100 feet long. So um, you're at 100. Yeah, you're Actually, probably 250. You, you, I mean, I, th I think you would make it in sewer. Water doesn't matter. 
Mm-hmm. But all these green areas are just like where you would you could you know open and close gates depending on what they wanted. Well, there would okay. still probably need to be some sort of fence here. So if they wanted access, they if their party included pool access, then you'd have a gate where they could go in now. But if it was after <laughs> pool season, there'd be you know a fence here or something that was locked so that they couldn't walk over here and trip and you know fall in an empty pool or whatever they do. Well, you could still have access to all of this stuff. Around. You lock that. You could, you know, you'd lock anything that you could go over here and get into the pool. You just, you'd, be, you'd have access to this stuff. So how big of a clubhouse is it? Oh, I don't know. I just, you know, I was, you know, our current, um, when I say clubhouse, I just call it a clubhouse. It sound like it went wrong. So the pool wouldn't use this for daily operations? No, it would still be for just rentals, not for the pool. Though. You know what I'm saying? It would just be part of the pool as far as under one, you know, title facility. And then... Um, no, I, I'm assuming I didn't measure that concrete pad with the just like racket court was, but I mean it looks similar to what our current shelf. Yeah, probably a little under. The only thing would be is, is parking would be just the, outside of the pool would be easy, but parking during the summer but months. Then I, then so we, I, we, we copy these over here just uh, just to give you. Yeah, you, you could add a million of them. But I what I was looking at was just right. who is going to have priority parking to whether you're here or you're going in the pool. Right. Let me, let me ask you this: If you bring, it doesn't matter if there's water and sewer lines under the concrete. You know, we could do whatever you want on top. Of that. City building and park. Say that again. So if, if the sewer lines run. I'm assuming they're run here. They're they're not in here at all. They they well, come when they would. So yeah, they would come out here in the right of way, run here, oh, and, and then you would down. run them in. The acoustics out there. And yeah, you wouldn't run anything in this in this line. You'd run it in the ditch. Do you know about how many I just don't want to keep. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, so I, I think you run about fifty dollars no, per fifty dollars per foot for utility. For utility. Easy. Yeah, you're hundred dollars for water. Yeah, because you're looking. How far past? Oh no, it's, it's farther than that. So um, yeah, yeah well, that's going to go down. Ninety degrees. How much is this? Just a bridge. None of You need a second? Yeah. Um, yeah where just, doing some math. Mr. Graham had a question when you were ready. Oh, what's up? Oh, go ahead. So you're hundred dollars. This is not cheap. Not here. On the side. Yeah. Do you know me put it on 225 to 250? Easy. Yeah. 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 All the way down. Stick that, to that building. building all the way up in the I'm just wondering how much of this area uh, we're going to tear out. Yeah. The parking. You know, and at some point in time, I want to see this road yeah. taken wide yeah. and that parking out there. Yeah. 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 How far past the end of the parking lot at the pool the city property? I don't know. Mm-hmm. You, you, you'll have more access to that on your iPad pull at the county GIS records. You know, Mr. By chance, Mr. Kitka? What's that? How far, like, Next to skate park where it turns into trees, how much farther city property goes? Ballpark? I looked, I think there's like an acre or something over there in there. Yeah, I, I want to just leave with information. So it goes all the way down. Creek. The creek. They, there's an easement that comes in and then it turns into Fad Middles property by that easement. So we go a little bit towards the woods a little bit more, and then there's a, a wide easement from Fad Middles, and then it goes into Highway property. But another thing too is we don't know the topograph topograph of that. You can we don't know. I don't know. And someone else may know. How I may know. But say where the woods line start, is that flat land or does it start to go down into a pretty easy? I don't know. Never been past it because if it just starts to go down, then you might as well consider that undeveloped. You know what I'm saying? How how flat is it before it starts to go? Is the creek back down in the ravine or is the creek at ground level? Oh no! The, yeah, the creek the creek goes down. Goes down. Yeah, you, it is. It's you, it's a it's a flood zone all the way through that area. I just don't know how far it comes back up on our property. Um, this is 110 feet, mm-hmm. so you figure at 110 plus about 100 or 210 to get out of the intersection. You're probably about 250. 250 feet. Yeah, I would say at least. And times that by 100. Mm-hmm. So 20 to 30 thousand just in that. Mm-hmm. 
So you're looking at twenty, thirty thousand just to get water and sewer. We will have to bring it off through Baker. It's about fifty dollars per foot per utility. And we're estimating around you know, fifty or so about twenty-five thousand of that plus will be just for uh, get the water. To the water. We don't already have it at the pool. If the line's not big enough to connect to. It feeds the pool from Brubaker, but it you can't tie because we only have a two inch that feeds the pool, which feeds the whole pool system. So we'd have to tie in a whole new, um, probably a four or six inch minimum to have it hydrated down there, and then sewer would be a minimum of four inch. What about that Smith Park? The, the, right off Washington. Right there. Yeah. yeah, the water and sewer run right at the hillside of uh, Smith Park. How far is it from? On the park side or on the house side? Or in the middle of the street? The proposed location on where it would be about 175 to 200. And then um, I'm oh, already geez. looking at running other water line because the, the current shelter house, current outdoor restroom, and the new uh, drinking water fountain, we're looking to tie a new line in anyway because they're underfed from Smith Street from back when the old shelter house used to be there. That's why if you flush the toilet in the bathroom, it kind of takes forever. So what would it cost to, to that? Uh, the good thing about it is, is it's almost all all grass, no crossings. And then one is the right of way of ours stop at Brubaker. Um, I got to look at where the pool is, but yeah, we're it'll be a couple crossings. It means a little more probably at the pool location than there. You just they would just open trench and dirt. They would have no crossings. Um, there is storm that runs very close to that side also, so it just depends. So for the sake of saving government time and resources, I would like to have a, I don't know how council can formally do it, um, but is council as a whole even entertaining putting money into the pool district? Well, there was also the skate park. I think some, I think someone else on the just skate skate park is a little different. It's not really technically part of it. No. Well, yeah, no, I know that, but I know I think someone wanted to talk about it. Done. But it could be used. You could use that grant money for the skate park. Yes. That so counts. Our skate park is kind of pathetic. It is, but and I mean, I'll be honest with you. When I first got this, and we thought we could do both. I was leaning towards more towards skate park and doing shelter house for cheap. But now that it comes in that, we will be able to do both. You might as well get some of the in there. And I hate to afford it, but the skate park is something that we could relocate. Um, and put a little love into it, but again, at the same time, too, you have to look at revenue. You have to look at who's going to use this street. We need to relocate where Smith Park somewhere, we can put it somewhere else, we can stay where it's at. Um, I mean, it's to me, when I look at these three options, clearly, the most to me, the most common sense one is to you know, put a new shelter house in because we see how many people we turn away on a weekend basis. I mean, most of our residents will be able to take advantage of the shelter house. Um, and again, it's revenue stream, you know? Um, we have an opportunity to get something for, I don't want to say free anymore because we have some design work we'll have to do. But for very minimal cost, we get years upon years of returnable income. To me, that should be the nail in the coffin. Makes the most total sense. Uh, now, you know, we could go and we're looking at the numbers on this, and we thought the metal building was going to be a lot less. Then, yeah, let's spread the love around. Let's, let's definitely get a shelter house and, you know, <clears throat> put some money in the skate park. There's a little point in time where I thought, hey, let's just do a skate park because that's really what the kids want. But then you kind of, you, you, you got to start looking at the information that comes to you. You have to dissect things. Um, from a you know a common sense standpoint, that's going to what's the best thing for the buck for the community as a whole. And I just feel as though with some of the big projects we've been doing lately, it goes to you know places where not a lot of the community members get into. It. Um, so that's when I just keep on going back to shelter house. I mean, we turn people every weekend. We turn people away. Sorry, we don't have any room for you to go down to Buffalo Township. And that's ticking, 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 ticking in my head. And I'm, this 
it's a public it's a public facility it's a public government but it is still to be run by a business um, and you know I just have a hard time putting money into that pool we put a lot of money into that pool for the past two years it still has yet broken profit so what is this going to change anything about it it may make the pool look nicer okay but you still got AV, aging infrastructure your pumps are still old. your pump house is still old. You know, a new line is just going to keep the water in. You know, you still got aging infrastructure in there that you, you, need, you need to call. So from an administrator standpoint and a key policy advisor for the city of New Carlisle, it's council, and I've said it multiple times, council needs to sit down and really have a heart-to-heart -heart with that pool. Uh, whether you go ahead and put the, the thing in and see how that goes for a couple years, or you guys close it in a couple years and start saving money, and you put it in front of your voters, who's essentially what you putting that bill anyway uh, the pool is just a it's just it's not it's not performing how we want and it's great that we have it it's awesome that kids get to go to it but at some point in time we got to look at is it really beneficially for the city i've said this numerous actually go ahead mr Rodel, you no, go ahead mr Lair. i've said this before i don't know if i've said it in a meeting but you know anytime we have a big project whether it's police water towers, uh, water plants, sewage plants. The administration side brings, you know, you, got, you guys work with this stuff every day. And you see that the water tower needs to come down because it's not needed. Justifiable that it's not, you know, we don't need to keep the tower, for example, because, you know, we got the big one. But, you know, when we, when we did the other one, you know, you guys bring these ideas, you bring, you know, options to us for these big expensive projects but not one time has ever anything ever been brought to city council for the pool that you know what are some options to help make it make money what are some options to help it from costing so much money the pool you know like i said kroger aquatic center was losing i think you know last time i checked a little over a hundred thousand dollars now of course obviously uber heights can probably afford to, to lose that kind of money um you know the pool was losing you know 10 years you know Six years ago, it was losing $45,000 a year, if I remember the numbers right. I, I'm just going off the top of my memory. And then, you know, it started to bounce back a little. We put a little money into it, you know, chairs, um, paint, things like that. And at one point, if I do remember, I'm not, I'm not saying it ever made tons of money back, but it was to a point of breaking even. Now, I think it's back to losing because we put, you know, we put bathrooms in it, which is, you know, you know, great and it's and it's drawing attention that, that it's a clean pool and it's been getting updated but i don't understand why from your guys aside there's never anything brought forward positive about the pool. it's always negative and i understand from your point of view that yes it's 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 an enterprise fund it should make money but unfortunately pools i don't think any of them make money not because they're necessarily ran wrong it's you know kind of like a drive -in. i mean the drive-in's open for three four months out of the year and that's why there are probably not too many of them around. But I also think, you know, this is a service. It's a service to the community, just like any of our parks. Now, I know our parks aren't enterprise funds, you know. Uh, Smith Park doesn't have to turn a profit. It sits there, we pump money into it for, for you know, a second shelter house, new roads, uh, things of that nature, uh, signage, playground equipment, whatever it may be. And that's, and that's fine. But to put money into a pool is bad. You know, you guys have been down there just as many times as I have, and to say or to even question is the community getting anything out of this facility is just, it's a, I think it's an irresponsible question. We provide streets for our residents to drive. Mm -hmm. They don't make money. We provide police protection. That doesn't make money. We provide fire protection. That doesn't make money. We provide parks. They don't make money. Those are all services that we provide to the citizens of our community. The pool would be exactly the same thing. Yes, it does generate some revenue to help offset the expenses, but you don't expect a swimming pool to be a profitable venture. If it were a profitable venture, the previous owners would still have it. Okay. So, I took some notes. Let me, let so, me jump in, Mr. Bridge. Okay. If you don't mind, mm -hmm. um, I just lost my train of thought. go ahead. Okay. So one of the points you said is that the pool potentially comes close to break even. 
or about I didn't say currently, currently but it well, comes. Well, I think we all have to not and tell the correct answer to this is even with the years it does come close, it's not making money because the general fund transfers money to it just about every year, if not every not, year. Not every year. But Recently, yeah. yes, yes. No, but every year it gets transferred. Mm -hmm. And that is actually, we can look at the budget history. You can. That. And if it's not, if it maybe missed one year, I, in my six years as city manager. But what I'm, but what I'm, I think was, the, was but what I'm saying, so it, it, it made an improvement. Money in from the general fund, you have to take that transfer out. Oh, I agree. And that's the bottom line. So when you do that, the pool always makes money positive in a year because of the 40 or 60,000 that's given to it by the general fund. Your Huber Heights Aquatic Center. And it's almost like compare apples and apples. You know, Huber Heights, I'm, I don't know how much it makes or loses a year, but we tend to forget that the name of it is Kroger Aquatic Center. So they have a massive corporate sponsor assisting them with the facility. Now, Councilman Grimm, you had stated that streets don't make money. They do. Um, because that's how people get to our establishments, get to the house, and get to their businesses. I know it's kind of far-fetched. Do, in far a way, fetch. make us money. very far fetched. Yeah. Um, police and fire, that is a service, and you are correct about that. Um, that is a service that is everyone in the city would actually be able to take advantage of. The pool is not a service, that is, I wouldn't consider that a service in municipal government operations. Um, that's more of a, I guess, facility, not a service. Um, but when you look at, you know, when you compare the police and the fire and the streets to the pool, it's to me, it's not on them. It's not comparable. Um, but, and the reason why, we're not negative about the pool. We just see the calls we get on the pool. We see the, you know, why why does the council keep on putting money in the pool and I don't use the pool. Um, but we also build the phone calls on it. But we're also the ones with professionals working this every single day with many years of experience. So, if we're not suggesting you guys any of the pool, it's probably because we see it's not going to be beneficial. Having a nice entryway is not going to bring people into your pool. I'm not, it's just not. If we saw all these changes we're going to make, we made last year, the new bathrooms, it's always great to look nice. But I don't think people are coming to our pool just because we didn't get it. I think people come to our pool because it's, it's not as big as Kroger, it's not as big as Pip. Um, and whatever else reason they have. Maybe they're just down there in Duffel County if they want to come up or you're out from a Boston driveway. But when you see the disconnect from administration into that pool, it's just because we see the inner, inner work. Again, we are we are the professionals who work in this every single day. Um, I got a lot of schooling behind me to do this. Now he's got 20 plus years experience. So if the pool to this day hasn't worked, nothing, no magic wand's going to appear. Nothing's going to make it work. I think the responsibility of council is to look at that and make tough decisions and say, all right, yeah, we do love the service. And I'm right there with everyone. It is a service. I get it. But we have to look at what's best for the city as a whole. You know, the city is still in recovery mode. When I took over city manager six years ago, we are still trying to save money, save money, save money. Um, you know, I know there's been talk about, you know, what is the future of the pool? That's not for us to decide. That is for council to decide. But I would just hope that council would look at things from a from a budgetary standpoint and see what you guys what is what how much are you willing to use to, to provide this service. But I don't think any massive amounts of money should be going into this pool until council decides what they're going to do. And I definitely don't think any massive, especially with a permanent building like this, even be considered for the pool until we know for sure if we go through this line or not, and if that liner is going to work for the next 10, 15 minutes. Let's say we get the liner and it don't work, and now we're back to square one. The pool is just not in good enough shape to put a permanent structure down there that's going to outlive the pool itself. May I follow And this isn't really just to like hop on and keep going. Um, a lot of people forget that the water department takes a huge hit in the pool. Not so much labor, not so much, um, I mean, there is a lot of labor, water. A lot, a lot we of send labor. a lot of treated water via people who pay their, through their, um, or we're losing it. We're not getting any revenue off that water loss. You speak of options. Options uh, that I bring are for requirements for the city. Water, sewer, things we are regulated to maintain no matter what. 
streets. They're required to do, as he said, move around. And the first person that complains is on streets. That's your first complaint ever on anything that the city has is that is streets. So when you look at options of me epoxy in the cracks back in 2009, having Hensley's come in and drill a new drain in it, those options have always been there. But typical with options, you're gonna have funding sources. Mm -hmm. There is not funding sources on, so wastewater, I need a $160,000 clarifier. I have funding sources, whether it's via rates or whatever, that can handle that because it's a requirement. I don't fix it, the EPA will be in. The little things that happen with the pool, we have tried to fix, but with the age, the liner, the things like that, those, sometimes the liner may not be brought by me, but it's because it's, it's usually not an option. The gentleman has my videos from him this year, and he almost says we almost have to pump it out. So it's kind of like, I can't bring something that is not concrete. I will not bring you uh, something that's just floating out there that has no concrete evidence to it. It's just not, it's just, it will mislead if I bring anything that is not vital to the city. Well, not necessarily options to fix, like, you know, crack or pain or whatever it may be, but options to generate more. Like, for example, I mean, I'm not saying it's the perfect option. Uh, was, you know, the, the secondary shelter house moving down there, it could generate revenue. What about other things that could generate revenue down there? What about going after, say, Kroger to make it sponsored by, you know, I don't know how that works for the pool or things of that nature, but is, is that an option? Is there an option to add other things down there? Uh, two grants. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know what, I know I emailed you guys a grant that I found. I actually emailed it to all the council about a grant. I, I don't know what kind of money it would bring in, somewhere in a couple hundred thousand dollar range. Um, you know, that obviously isn't going to rebuild an entire pool, but if, 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 I'm not saying it is, if the liner was an option, that could possibly be paid for. Um, I, I just feel that there's no effort to at least even attempt to not necessarily fix it, but to come up with options to at least give to us. You're right, you guys are the professional, Mr. Keiko. You're the professional. You work with the pool, uh, you know, daily probably. I, you guys have the contacts, you know the laws, the government as far as grants and monies that are out there. Um, I, I just think it's always been quicker to say no. Um, you guys ask, does the city truly get anything out of it? I think it's the most, you know, what, what do we say the pool's probably going to be? Just ballpark. Do you have an idea? I know Cap Collins on here. Let's, we'll, let, let's, just, let's just say for conversation's sake, it's losing, we'll say $20,000. Um, we'll even say twenty five. So what do you get for your $25,000 loss? Yes, it's a loss, and I agree. It's totally different from streets or parks that are not enterprise funds. But what do you get for that? Plus the water, please. I'm sorry. Yeah. Please add the the, the water loss. Right, One right. One of the things we can't, I mean, it's some of the things we would might have to look at. I mean, if we had to charge the pool for the water they use, the pool would not waste it. Well, I know, but the city doesn't charge itself for its own water. But if they're called inter, 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 depart, inter department will charges, and they're a very real thing. Okay, but it's always been brought to our attention that we don't charge ourselves for our own water, so let's not change the story to but, fit what well, we're I'm, trying to sell. I'm not. What I'm trying to do is you clearly have missed the point. No, I understand that what you're saying. The water, water department, chemicals. You have water department. It, it spends a lot of money to treat that water that goes into the, to the pool. I, I get the water that. department provides all the labor to open that pool. I, and they do not get charged for that. I understand that. So there's a lot that goes into opening that pool that takes away from the other departments that need to go on. But our water treatment facility plant processes and treats all that water. Mm -hmm. That is wear and tear of the equipment. That is chemical cost. That is manual labor cost to make sure that those equipment pieces are working right. And that is the end result to go back in the pool and then refill that pool every time it loses. So I'm not changing the story to manipulate it. Those are the, some of the things that we, right now it's up to us. The state could in three years say, hey, it's now a mandate. You have to do in, in the department of charges. So those are some of the things that we have experience with that we're not changing it. No. It has never come up before. No, and I understand that. I mean, we've, we've all talked about that. I so know there's that. a lot that goes into that pool other than just the pool. And we report that water loss. Yeah, just I so know. you know, we report yeah, it to yeah, the EPA in no, there. I know. I know. We've yeah. talked about the, the chemicals that are getting used to, to, to clean that water to send it to the pool. I totally and we're that. not talking evaporation and splash. No, no. no I, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know. But I'm just saying for, for what you, you know, Obviously, you know, we're not a, a bigger city like Huber, but what I'm saying, what you get for, and again, I'm just using a rough number because I don't have it in front of you. Let's say it's losing $25,000. We'll even go to thirty. What do you get for $30,000? Spent $30,000. Well, 
And yes, it's an enterprise fund and it should cover itself. It should. Doesn't mean it has to, and I'm not saying that that's responsible to not let it. But what you get it in comparison to a park that you pump money into nonstop and get nothing. You get probably 20 kids that are making paychecks, saving money for college or cars, they're learning about finances, they're paying taxes to a city, they're learning job responsibility. You have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of kids who come to the pool, have fun, exercise, learn how to swim. Um, I mean, the, the benefits to that, and again, I don't know what the total is, I'm just spitting out a number, but for that price tag, it, it outweighs it because we, we, we put money into all these other parks, we don't get anything back out of it other than the people that use it. That's, you know, we do get that. Um, if you go by the pool on any warm summer day, you see a pack. It obviously is a popular service. Okay. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm making a note here because I think this conversation has switched to should the pool stay open at all yeah. versus should we put in this grant money into it. So my, I just don't want to put any grant money into the pool. Not, to keep it open or not is a completely different meeting and right. a completely different discussion. Right. Yeah. I just don't think we could put any of this grant money into the pool. That's okay. it. Then that's why we're here. We're not here to talk about the pool's going to stay open or not, and we, but we can't just sit there and say it loses 30000 a year. Because we can't start calculating how much the water department loses. Because then it's rough to take that into consideration too, even though it's a sunk cost. But we can't just say it loses thirty a year. We have to take into account the wear and tear of the water department. But again, I don't want to, this, this is not a discussion if the pool should stay open or not. This is just a discussion if should any of this grant money be used for that. that that's all. But I think we're starting to slide thought, yeah. to a different. I thought he said it couldn't be used for the pool. It can't be used for the structure of like the part that holds the water. It could mm -hmm. technically be used for a shelter to add shade or some, or chairs or whatever it may be. Just not the, yeah. the way I thought. Yeah, we couldn't replace the concrete in the bottom with the money. Yeah, well, but we yeah. could build another pool you know, I would think, or another facility or log cabin. Not 400,000. Yeah, not before, but no. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh um, does any, you guys okay? Go ahead. Um, I have two, two statements. The first one, um, Instagram, honestly, what do you think would happen to the citizenship in this town if we get away with services such as streets and police and fire? I would mention it. I'd be high tail on it. So using that as an Dan, come back just real quick. Sorry. Yes. Okay. I just didn't know if there was an emergency <laughs> or something. No. When we all were elected, we took an oath to do the best job, I guess, that we can. Mm -hmm. I think one of the parts of that oath was the fact that we're going to look for the people's money to see how it is well spent. As you know, I'm chief improver. All right. And I think, yes, we've got two different opinions of how we need to spend the money. Today, we need to figure out what we're going to do with this grant, which is a gimme. I think we need to go back, let's get on that, get that read, and I think we need to go back to the fact that we need to have a council retreat 
design ourselves as to which way we're going to travel, what programs we're going to do in the next three, five years, get that worked out. If we're going to put the pool up for a vote of the citizens, let's get that figured out at a separate meeting. But today, let's get this solved as to what we're going to do with this grant to get it out for a month. More? Oh. Randy, just real quick, what was, what would you say the shelter house brought in a year? It's about 16,000. And architect fees, I think, from Friday was going to be about, what, 16, 18,000 is what? It's about Actually, 10 to, 10 to 12 percent of the total construction okay. costs usually. Okay. So, so, it might, it might be so a year, year and a half, and, and the new shelter house would cover the, the costs that we're looking at of our pocket. And after that, it would be all revenue. Then, you know, I said, I just say plus or minus 800, but if I had the total amount, yeah, so you, for the shelter house bring us the statistics oh, and ask about 60 40. 60 40, but yeah. at the end of that, did yeah. I just say it's I'm sorry, yeah, about I the same because that. it's plus or 800? Did I give a dollar amount or did I just say plus or 800? I think, I think you gave a dollar amount. So let me close my eyes so I can see this. Yeah. I can see it. There was one year we went down a lot. I want to say it's like upwards of 20? No, you just said plus or 800. You didn't actually give a number for it. So you gave a breakdown of citizens versus. I'm sorry, it was 16, 16, 16. One year was 13, then it went back up to 16. So, so we'll just, yeah, say 16. Yeah. So, you know, a year max two, and it'll cover its, its architectural fees that we would possibly have to cover. Because it'll make a little more, it'll be a yeah. more expensive unit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we can definitely charge more because it'll have a kitchenette and new and better air and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have to calculate the out of pocket expense for yep. the return on investment. Yep. I just calculate yep. additional year on that. Yep. Mm -hmm. no, I agree. Um, so I guess the, I guess the big decision is where are we going to put it? What okay. makes the most sense if we're going with shelter house? Um, I know some people have brought up the old Madison Street location. I personally think that's that's a prime location for a developer. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's uh, some some single family homes or a new apartment complex. Uh, as Sheaver Heights continue to get more congested, no one wants to live in Fairborn. Uh, New Carlisle is, is, is prime, I think, in the next eight to ten years to, to really see some some growth. Um, just look at Twin Creeks. Um, two, I love the pool. I do. I, I grew up at the pool. Um, spent every day from the time I was probably ten to I mean I worked there for three years. Um, so I love the pool. I do not ever want to see it go anywhere. Um, I'm all about putting money into the pool. Um, I just don't know if right now is the right time to, to sink a ton of money into it. Um, I think the first thing we need to do is, is for the pool area is look at the skate park, relocating it. That will in turn help the parking issues because we can use that space for more additional parking. Um, that's got to be the first thing, whether we locate that skate park to Smith Park and take away some of the tennis courts that do not get utilized. Um, or, or move it to one of the other parks that have enough green space to, to, to get it over there. Um, I'm all about putting money in the pool. Um, I, I like to see the study with the new bladder that, that is coming out, how many years they're going to give us on a warranty for that. Um, I don't mind the pool loses a little money because I believe it's, it's, it's a kind of a, a joint adventure. You know, yes, you want it to be close to profitable, but you can swallow a little bit of loss because it does provide a valuable service to our, our residents, to our kids. Um, I don't go there as much as I, I would like to um, right now because I'm just so busy with, with baseball and some other stuff. But um, when I'm there, it's busy. And I know there's certain things that it needs. Um, I think a, sub, a second open air uh, shelter would be nice for parties new chairs it needs a lot more chairs i mean there's fights there on weekends because they're out of chairs uh, that's why i bring my own now. um but i think with this opportunity with the four hundred thousand, um i did send everyone a, a link to a shelter house like there i think if you look when you look at it um we'll um hopefully resolve some of your concerns about the nuance and the uh the exterior look of a shelter house um, some of the new steel buildings are, are 
fantastic. I mean, they can look just like a log house without being a log house with, with minimal upkeep, um, you know, <laughs> longevity of 25 to 50 years before we even have to put money into it. So, like Mr. Cook said earlier, I think we need to steer this back to to whether we do the, the 250, 275,000 for a skate park. And if we do it in the same location, we're going to have the same problem going forward with the pool. We're going to have parking issues. April brought up earlier that uh, she had made several announcements this weekend because U-Haul was going to tow a bunch of the, uh, you know, the visitors at the pool for parking. Um, so parking is going to continue to be an issue. And, and I don't think tearing down a bunch of trees and doing Creekside to put more concrete is, is the answer. Uh, I think the answer would be move the skate park to a more centralized location and use up that space right there for parking. Mm -hmm. um, both for, for, you know, citizens and for employees. Um, so, um, that's what my three cents. Thank you for your two cents, sir. <laughs> Much well spent. <laughs> but you will just, we'll just throw down the line here so we just kind of get, if that's okay with you guys. You want to go, sir? I'll pass. Okay. All right. Uh, well, with those options, skate park and the, sh and the shelter house, I would rather go with the skate park because Smith Park gets a lot of attention. Uh, and I'm not saying that's bad because Smith Park's our, you know, our park. It's a beautiful park. I love it. Um, you know, whether we put put it into the skate park or we put it into one of the other parks, even but out of those two options, I would go for the skate park. But did you say we we could not? With that being said, we can't expand that parking lot at all. With the grant money, because of the skate. You want it Smith Park? No, no. It. Um, if, if, yeah, you. Yeah, you couldn't expand an existing parking lot. You could build an all new for the new facility. Yeah. From what I, from what I'm gathering. I think he's talking about at the pool. At the, but not for the pool. The skate park. So if you built, you know, you got the skate park here. If you decide to expand the skate park a little, could, would that money cover for adding new parking for the skate park? If it's new parking, it should, correct? I don't know where you're going to get the land from unless you pull over with the redevelopment of the land, right? I don't, I don't know. We don't, I don't know what land ours and how far it goes. I'm just asking. If the land's there, would the money cover to add new parking for it? Mm -hmm. skate park? So if I, so if I might make sure I'm at the speed on the conversation. So you would rather the money go to the skate park opposed to the shelter, to a shelter house if it came down to one or one. If or it came out of one or two, yeah, just because. You know, Smith Park has gotten a couple new updates over the past couple of years. I might you know, give the kids something who's had a skate park that's been around since the early 90s. You understand that one would generate revenue and one would not? I understand that, Randy. Okay. And do we, I'm sorry, I don't want to speak that thing. Howie, do we project, I mean, would it be safe to say that building materials, I mean, it's probably like gasoline, it's going to fluctuate. I mean, but. Does the, does the, uh, does the um, industry foresee that building materials will go down? Are they uh, going to stay high? Oh, no, eventually they'll go down. But in, in talking with some lumber people, because I was looking at a, adding a deck, <laughs> it, could be, it could be another year plus because the need is there now. Yeah. And as the price starts dropping, that need will pick up, yeah. and then they may hold it longer. Why in the man wants it? Once you get corporations and they see what they can get out of something. Um, and actually, truck. let's say lumber flattened truck, not to get off topic, trucking now is raised theirs up because now they want a piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. So when someone's going to start leveling off their price, someone else kicking in. So okay. it'll be a mad rush for some time. Yeah, Moody, Moody's expected 18 more, 18 more months before you would start seeing prices on things like lumber. Um, even things like toilet paper, cardboard, aluminum, uh, Moody's projected 18 more months before you start to see it level off and come back to pre-pandemic prices. Not just because of supply and demand, but the increase in wages uh, that these companies are having to pay to get people to come back to work or to, to work. Um, and federal, uh, federal, federal prevailing wages. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. I, I don't I don't predict pricing to come come down anytime soon. I mean, we just, uh, we spoke with the builder last week to build a house that we, we, we got plans for and got his quote two years ago, and it's 47,000 more now than it was two years ago. Strictly lumber. Mm -hmm. 
There's no, no increase in manpower, a little bit of manpower, but most of that is all one. So on your thing, Mayor, it, it was, uh, just make sure I'm understanding, um, Shelter House Smith, Shelter House, well, was a, an option at pool, Skate Park Pool, New Skate Park at Pool, was that your? That's just because that was presented by. No, no, I, no I know, I'm just trying to gather all these because I'm thinking Carlisle Park, um, Will Willowick has no room for anything. No, no, no. Um, Carlisle Park is not good for, I'm just tell you, not good Too for Skate houses. Park. Yeah. It's hidden. Yeah. Okay. An open gazebo creates issues. Be noisy. Um, so yeah, I, I was just trying to think, making sure I'm getting parts right with where you might want to put something with what utilities are available and stuff like that. Yep. Go ahead, sir. I'm kind of torn. Um, the skate park does need redone, but then I got to thinking, think more people would use another shelter house. Pool is always packed. The shelter house is rented every weekend. I have not seen a whole lot of people at once at the state park. Possibly because of the condition it's in. I would go more for it. a new shelter house at Smith Park. If the grant will cover just about all of it. Would council be opposed? We have, and I have not talked to Howie about this because I will definitely take a look at this consideration. And we've talked about it very briefly here. Well, probably about once every two years. I don't know if you know about breaking up the mountain. Just case you put it We have two tennis courts at the park. They're in one thing and they're double thing. We also have one that's a single. One court already passed. I have looked every, not every single time I've passed this court, but I do look at how many people are using those tennis courts. Not a lot of people do. We could literally take the one that just has this single tennis court in it, take the tennis court stuff out, and move the skate park stuff right there. It is right off Smith Street, highly visible. Um, it's already fenced in. I don't know if the concrete would work. I just, I'll just say, uh, no, just, I apologize. I'll just say uh, it is a Nature Works grant to oh. put all that in. So nothing can be done at those tennis courts. Nothing? Nothing. Is there like a I don't know what the, the length is on the time that you have to maintain that facility, but that Nature Works grant was all brand new asphalt in the single court with the poles, the nets, that was all purchased, and then um, retying some fence with a Nature, no. OD&R Nature Works thought, grant. I wasn't here when that city got that Nature Works grant, so I can come back right over here. Uh, I, I don't know what the longevity is if it's 10 years of keeping it, but I know they hit us for Brubaker Park, you know, the exercise equipment. That's been there for how long? I mean, obviously. It's gone. Yeah, we still have to maintain a sign. Right. So. But, yeah. You good, Mr. Jim? All right, Ms. Eagles. Um, I'm like Mr. Graham. I'm torn. I'd like to see the skate park fixed up. But as far as income for the city, I think if we were to do another shelter house at the at Smith Park, I think that would be having more money coming in. I'm I'm in favor of that new shelter house. I think that. I think that the skate park needs more attention than just fixing it up. I mean, I think it needs to be dealt with so that it's more attractive and accessible or whatever. We already have a winner with the shelter now. I have large table now. May I offer some, something on the uh, skate park? The skate park equipment may look old, but it's fully functional. And if you look around, because I've been California, I've been a lot of California where it's huge for skate parks. Uh, they don't, I mean, they got poles that look grungier than that. It is grungy. I agree. Um, it's hard to repowder coat the surface on those, but it, it does need cleaned up. 
but it is still fully functional. It is not like broken down because most, most of your new skate parks are going to be concrete with a um, metal ridge on all the lips where they very rarely make metal anymore, but sometimes hold up longer than concrete, sometimes. So you may look at it, it what I think it needs is a few more apparatuses, but by looking at the half pipe, it still works fine. You, there's nothing, there's no like unsafe hazards with the rail or the ramps or anything like that. Um, because we do replace bolts on it, but it does look grungy. There are some stuff, so a couple items that maybe fair to bump you to shoot your knee in there or something. Yeah, do that, because I mean, these guys look at it every day, and if they're missing, like a say, a lip came up when you get a new entry ramp or something. But yep. All right, so Mr. Bridge, you need a, would you like a motion for this, sir? Oh, yeah, we need some direction so we can get the ball rolling. What, give me some, give me some details, sir. Okay, so move we continue with the grant for the shelter house. We want to just redo this. That's that part. Oh, hold on, I'm sorry. We're talking about numbers with Mr. Pico. And I am the clerk. So let me get myself back in that headspace right here. I'm sorry, was there a motion made? Yes. There was, and who made what was the motion? Yeah, right, that's what I was thinking. Make a motion for us to go ahead with the grant for the shelter house in Smith Park. I second. And Ms. Eggleston was a second. I'm just going to pass to the title. Yeah. All right, so we got a motion on the floor, and we will start with Mayor Lowry. No. Councilman Grimm? Yeah. Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. Councilman Robol? Yes. Ma'am, no, 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 that's how it goes with Robert Rules of Order. You always second back to the first and second one last. <laughs> appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Councilwoman Noah Kowski? Yes. And Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Uh, that motion passes five to one. Now, do you want a motion to refuse Mr. Cobb? Well, we have to go into citizen. Are you going to do that next? Yeah. Excuse me. So the next, are you good, Mr. Bridge? I am, yes. Okay, so we'll drop down to Citizen of the Year award discussion, and I will, I guess, if you don't mind, I'll say from the NFU because this is kind of a new thing. I heard that Mr. I can't remember whose idea. Uh, it was Mr. Mr. Cook. Okay, okay well, let one of you two start her off because this is your kind of topic. Uh, if you don't mind. <clears throat> there were three ladies that were, and their names were mailed to us and uh, to maybe honor them as citizens of the year uh, for what they have done for the city through the pandemic and everything else. And I just think that uh, I know that we would like to do a citizens of the year, citizen of the year on an annual basis, but I think these three ladies need to be recognized. And then we can do another one to announce are you, uh, I guess, the words intending to re recognize these three now and then the possibility of recognizing another person toward the uh, town hall meeting? Yeah. I'll just clarify. So are, are, are you guys thinking, um, not necessarily in the form of a proclamation, but like maybe, because I know the city can probably pick up a, some sort of placard. Fairly cheap amount of price. Yeah. Are, are you thinking of like a plaque form type recognition? Or? Yeah. Is, I mean, even I mean, it's could, just something printed and framed. Instead of Citizens of the Year, can we do a community service award? There you go. Yeah. Um, you know, because they've gone above and beyond right. uh, what, what a, a regular member of the community has to do. Right. to be outstanding and then uh, maybe going forward 
um, even for this year, get more of a, a season of the year where we'll actually get a little bit more detail in, in what we want to put into this and how we want to take votes if we want to do a, a nomination on, on the, online on the website. But yeah, I think, um, we, I think we talked about that. I mean, that that makes sense because one of those people was Tilly Fultz, and she does not live in the city, so she's not sitting. Is that what, do you, you remember that, Mr. Bridge? Did you say that was something we could set up on the website where they could, like, yeah. you know, like submit a like, nomination? Yeah. Or? I don't think, did we say set up a website? Not a website, just a new tab we're, to watch. We're going to put a form on the website. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. that's easy. Yeah. For the Citizen of the Year and also another form for the veterans. Uh, for the flag. For the fanners. Yeah, but we're not getting to that until the 28th. So right. Yeah. We need but, to get into that next uh, yeah. yeah, and we can't go off topic too much, but I'm going to work on a policy to that. And I'll, I'll meet you guys later because right now it's, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get too much off. Um, yeah, I mean, adding a tab or adding little sort of stuff like that is very super simple. I also offered council too because I think we first talked about this like a month ago, a month and a half. But if you guys want to do even something more simple, you guys can take names and I can keep an Excel sheet and then share that with you like I do the ordinances. Um, however you guys want to do it, just let me know what I can do to, do to help. So do you, do you want to give... Yeah, I like Dan's idea of... Is it a community service Community service, 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 service. You, want to, you want to direct Mr. Bridge to start up a plaque for the first one of the three ladies? I'm assuming you would each give me each a plaque. Right. Is this something we're going to do past this op one time too? Okay. I'm going to buy more than three because I'll get a discounted for more. Yeah, I I Community Service Award. Okay, what would you like to, what would that say on the flag? Do you want to research some or do you already know? What do you think? I'm thinking basically this is an appreciation award given to so and so. Blank with the day for. Given this day of love. Well, we, I don't know, we want, here's my way I recommend. Because what I'll do is I'll do it like we have our keys of the city. And we I got a box of those are on it. You know, we send them to Kersey Smith. So I can go down to Dayton Stencil and I'll get some of these made. Um, community service award. Um, just something that whoever it is, we can send like a little piece of metal out and get that engraved with that name and just affix it to the already flat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, it might be hard to do given this day, blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? What we could do is do like name and then a year underneath it. Yeah. Law 2021. Right, yeah. Is that good? Okay. Like a motion for that, sir? Mm, yeah, so. Sorry. I gotta write it down, man. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a motion for that. Is that a motion? Retract your motion? Okay. So basically, community service award, insertable metal tag, name, and do we. Year, date, month, just year, year. I think. Year. Just a year. Just year. year. Name and year. Easy. Gotcha. And what do you want the plaque to say other than community? It'd be community service board up top, like a heading. And, and what do you say? In recognition? In recognition of your contribution to the community of New Ohio. Ohio. Okay. In recognition to your contributions to the uh, community of Nicaragua, Ohio. I guess we've got to put Ohio in there because there is a Nicaragua, Indiana. I recognition your contribution to the community of Nicaragua, Ohio. Um, should we, would we like a boat wood? Do we want a different type of wood or does that not matter? So it looks nice. Yeah. choice. It'll look nice. Okay, got it. I'll get those ordered. Uh, I don't know what Dayton Stencil's turnaround time is right now. I haven't ordered anything from them since I got Mr. Rogewall's name tag and it was a minute ago. Um, but I'll call them tomorrow and then I'll let you know. That we're having this anticipated date of you know, delivery. Are we doing those three ladies that you mentioned? Yes. I'll get a hold of you later. Oh, I do. You're right. Thank you. Can I? Um, Randy sent me a, a 
grant that he was notified of by the USDA? We can't do that. We, can, we only can stick to oh, the okay. A and B, the access to special fee. Next meeting. Regular right. meeting. It's only week. All right. No, uh, we're going to lunch tomorrow. We'll, we'll figure, we're we're going to sit down and talk okay. about it tomorrow, right? Yeah. We need a motion to excuse, excuse Mr. Cobb, which I'll make. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Second. Second by Mr. Okeps. Okay. All right. So, Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman uh, Roper. Yes. Um, Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. And then we'll go back to uh, Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. And yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. All right. Motion to excuse Mr. Cobb does pass five to six to zero. April put together a request for the village to carry some problems that she needs. And this. Uh, we need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Graham, second by Ms. Eggleston. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Ro Roadwall. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. <laughs> Something for the short hair. Oh, I missed something. Mayor. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Uh, we'll go to Councilwoman Eagle. Yeah. And Councilman Yep. Yeah. All right, we are adjourned at 423.